Hello everyone. In this INR number 101, we are going to discuss about another very important PYQ called as diabetic retinopathy. So what is diabetic retinopathy? So first we have to remember these diabetic retinopathy, what is the best predictor? So best predictor for diabetic retinopathy is one of the very uh, important PYQ is the duration of the disease. Remember it is not glucose, it is not the ketone level, nothing. It's a duration of the disease which is the most important for predicting the diabetic retinopathy. And what is the hallmark of diabetic retinopathy is a new vascularization, new blood vessel formation. Why I am saying like this because when you will see the last part of this, the management, that time you will see some of the drugs we are using to prevent the neovascularization also, right? So there are two types of diabetic retinopathy, non-proliferative and proliferative. Where non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, number one, we are going to discuss about non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, which is the most common type of diabetic retinopathy, right? And what are the features in this? So here we will see five features. Number one, you will see microaneurysm. Second, you will see retinal hemorrhages. Third, you will see hard exudates. Fourth, you will also notice cotton wool spots. And fifth will be the vision loss because of the macular edema. Right? So, microaneurysm is the earliest feature. Remember that microaneurysm. Microaneurysm is small blood vessel dilatation. Right? So, earliest clinical detectable lesion is the microaneurysm. And macular area is located in the inner nuclear layer so remember this will happen in the inner nuclear layer of the macula right so examiner they ask this question right Ki what is the area of the macro aneurysm so this is the inner nuclear layer of the macula is the area so now you can see there is a dilatation of the small blood vessel right so small blood vessel so that is called as micro aneurysm right second thing is the retinal hemorrhages now in the retinal hemorrhages now this is the retinal hemorrhages right so you can see here retinal hemorrhages so there are uh, you know uh, two types it can be superficial it can be deep also superficial is called as flame shaped hemorrhages right as you can see here the flame shaped hemorrhages and those who are deeper they are called as dot blot hemorrhages so deeper are dot blot hemorrhages here right so flame shaped hemorrhages are superficial dot blot hemorrhages are deeper one right then third is the hard exudate what is hard exudate hard exudate is the yellowish white waxy lipid patches in the outer plexiform layer remember that hard exudate will be present in the outer plexiform layer that is the important pyq right so hard exudate what is this this is the lipid material right because they are having excess amount of the lipid that will be coming so now you can see they are yellow color so this is called as hard exudate yeah yellowish because of the lipid material into this and where this will happen this will happen into the outer plexiform layer right the fourth one is the cotton wool spots what is cotton wool spots these are white or yellow fluffy and opaque patches remember these are white yellow fluffy and opaque patches which we are going to see in the retina and this see they are also yellow and hard exudate is also yellow but hard exudate is a lipid material cotton wool spot is because of ischemic damage of the retinal nerve fiber layer that is very very important point so remember this is important point cotton wool spots are caused by ischemic damage in the which layer retinal nerve fiber layer right and finally the macular edema will be causing vision loss right so now you can see these are the cotton wool spots right so these are the cotton wool spots and macular edema is the most common cause of blindness in the diabetic retinopathy remember that macular edema is the most common cause of blindness in the diabetic retinopathy see we can remember this by a mnemonic that what are the areas affected so cotton wool spots are retinal nerve fiber layer so we can remember this by mnemonic called as corn right where cotton wool and r n is nerve right so cotton wool spots is in retinal nerve fiber layer right then next is hope what is hope hard exudate right so hard exudate is in outer plexiform layer right so hard exudate outer plexiform layer and micro aneurysm we can remember this by a main micro aneurysm in the inner nuclear layer right so this is how we can remember this diabetic retinopathy location now comes to the uh, less common type which is proliferative uh, diabetic retinopathy see uh, proliferative di uh, diabetic retinopathy so name itself is suggesting proliferative what is proliferating blood vessels so retinal neovascularization is because of chronic hypoxia 
so because of the chronic hypoxia there will be a retinal neovascularization new blood vessel will be formed so you can see retinal neovascularization is formed here in this fundus examination and you will see abnormal new vessels which may cause vitreous hemorrhage right so abnormal new vessels will be forming and then you can see there is a vitreous hemorrhage going on right so vitreous hemorrhage can happen and they can also go for tractional retinal detachment so now you can see there is a tractional retinal detachment right what will be the management of diabetic retinopathy so most accepted diabetic retinopathy study right that examiner had asked this question right so what is that etdrs what is etdrs early treatment diabetic retinopathy study so this is the etdrs table right so what we do this chart etdrs chart is the best chart for visual acuity and this will be read from the three meter distance remember and number of letters in each line you can see there are five letters in each line each line is having five letters only their size is decreasing right so now you understand number of letters in each line is same that is five letter chart right that is why it is also called as five letter chart and size will be decreases and that will be expressed in the form of log units right so for checking the visual acuity of the diabetic retinopathy patient we are going to use the etdrs chart right which means early treatment diabetic retinopathy study this full form itself has been asked in exam right what is etdrs and you have to remember that early treatment diabetic retinopathy study that was the pyq now come to the treatment so treatment we will divide into three segments mild non-proliferative then moderate non-proliferative moderate to severe and then proliferative diabetic retinopathy right so mild non-proliferative di uh, diabetic retinopathy we will go for the periodic examination so what is periodic examination if you remember in the beginning i said the most important factor is the duration of the disease for diabetic retinopathy also right so type 1 diabetes you will start after five years of the onset right five years of the onset we will start periodic examination and follow-up will be every year annual follow-up will be there for type 2 diabetes it will start at the time of diagnosis itself right at the time of diagnosis itself you will start uh, examination and follow-up is for both of them follow-up will be annual right moderate to severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy you will go for closer follow-up and if it requires treatment then you will go for organ laser photocoagulation right and for proliferative diabetic retinopathy remember proliferative diabetic retinopathy treatment of choice if examiner says treatment of choice that will be pan retinal photocoagulation right so this pan retinal photocoagulation is done by organ laser or double frequency YAG, which is 532 hertz right so this laser will be 532 hertz laser and as i said that neovascularization is the hallmark of diabetic retinopathy who is responsible for neovascularization vascular endothelial growth factor you remember that proliferative diabetic retinopathy neovascularization is creating the problem so we have to block it how we will block it by blocking this growth factor vegf so that is why we are using anti vegf monoclonal antibody therapy for the treatment of proliferative diabetic retinopathy so these are given intravitreally right so inside the vitreous anti vgf treatment you are giving inside the vitreous now you can see inside the vitreous we are giving and these are pegaptanib bevacizumab ranibizumab eflibercept and brolusuzumab so these are the drugs which we are example of anti vegf monoclonal antibody which we are using for those lesion where vascularity is the reason for the pathology right so keep revising this topic best wishes for your exam